the dread hour is upon us. Here we are finally with the La Llorona reaction. And I will not lie, I have not been <laughs> looking forward to this. I mean, I kind of have, but not really. I've put it off. Right now it's Sunday night and I'm recording this. I was supposed to do it Friday. I just, I just couldn't. I procrastinated. I tried to put it off as much as I could. Nobody likes getting scared, except for a very select few of brave souls. But for me, it's kind of weird. Whenever I do a horror game or I watch a horror movie, I never want to watch it. But then when I'm like halfway through, I don't want it to end. It's like, it's such a weird balance. You know what I mean? But anyway, here we are. Finally with La Llorona. If you're wondering why I'm watching this movie, because it's, it's kind of random to watch this movie. But... There is a new Conjuring movie coming out, I believe June 4th, and I've seen pretty much every moving, moving, every movie set within this Conjuring verse up until this movie, La Llorona, and then Annabelle Comes Home, which I'll react to in a couple days, so it'll be on my channel next week. I mean, this video will be up tomorrow on a Monday, so like later in the week is when uh, Annabelle Comes Home, my reaction to it will be up. And just something about this movie is this one didn't do too well with the critics or the fans. I know a lot of people say don't believe Rotten Tomatoes and stuff, but generally they're pretty good with the reviews. And I generally also agree with them because they have a similar kind of uh, a taste, I would say, when it comes to like movie reviews. Same with me, like they're in sync with like what well, usually what I think. And just for reference, if this thing will load. On Rotten Tomatoes, the critic score is 28 and the audience score is 36. So that is not too hot. Especially considering all the movies have done fairly well, like high 60s, 70s, and up. But one thing to note is the director, uh, what's his name? Michael, if I'm pronouncing his last name right, Chavez? Is the director of this one. Usually James Wan is the one who does this. I know he did Aquaman, but he's done very well with horror movies and he's been able to consistently make them good but this michael chavez character uh is the director of the new conjuring movie and i'm like i don't know how that's gonna go for that because obviously here he didn't do too well critic and audience score so he could he could do it good i could just be judging him early but we'll see what happens um also on the note of this movie Good thing too, it's only an hour and a half, so I don't have to die over here for too long. But I'm, I wouldn't say pretty excited. I'm kind of excited. At least it's gonna keep me up. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have freaking nightmares, man. But anyway, onto this character of La Llorona on what I know, just like going into this movie. I know, I, I'm unsure what region it is. I know it's, uh, I don't think it's Southern American. Or it's it I, it's somewhere it's either in the um I'm sorry. I'm I'm just trying to get this geographically correct. I don't know. I, it's either Spain or it's one of those Spanish influenced countries. It might even be Mexico, I think, because this is an older legend. I, from my understanding, La Llorona or as I've heard it called is like the weeping woman. Apparently, again, I might be wrong, but I think it's a ghost lady. I've heard s somewhere that she mourned her husband and she cries at rivers and shit. And that's how she like lowers her victims, if you want to call that. And which I think is primarily children. So if that's true, I, I, I think she does mainly haunt rivers. So I'm like, first of all, this movie has their haunting a house. So I'm like, what's, how, how does that work? Again, I don't know. I don't know the entire myth. Or legend or whatever you want to call it of La Llorona but I'm interested to see there was also an Easter egg of her in Red Dead Redemption too if you didn't know that when you go out in the swamps near San Denis fun little tidbit but anyway god damn it let's get this shit started also before we start now that I say this I'm sorry if you don't like heavy swearing that's my bad I try to limit my like cursing when I watch things, I only like swear like what the hell and shit when I get excited. But I drop consistent F bombs when I get scared. So I don't know how scary this is gonna be. So I apologize if there's excessive vulgar language. 
But I can't help that. That's just my reaction. So, oh, here we go, man. Also, while this is being loaded up, if you haven't seen my WandaVision or Impractical Jokers reactions and you're interested in them, just check the description. They should be there in the form of a playlist. And also, I put the red LEDs in the back. Even though I don't know, I mean, really, you should do white because I'm pretty sure she wears like a, a wedding dress, but I don't know, red, evil, it fits for the most part. Oh my God, <laughs> I don't want to watch this. It's close to midnight and something evil's lurking in the dark. No, but really, it is actually almost midnight. Yeah, oh, dude. Oh, I don't want to do this. Kill me. <laughs> Kill me, bro. <sighs> no. No. Already, bro. I'm also pretty sure, I don't think she sinks at the river, but like she cries. That's why she's called the weeping woman. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Ah, so I was right. After a bunch of guesses, it is Mexican. Oh, hell no. Yo. Come on, no! <laughs> okay. So, she killed her children? Now I'm jogging my memory. I thought... She was like a vengeful ghost looking for her drowned children. Or was it her husband? I don't know, bro. It would not be such a bad thing. Trisha Alvarez isn't going to talk to someone like Donna. Someone like Donna. I just mean that she knows me. I've been with that family for four years. Hey, Patricia. How are you? Patricia, what happened in here? Where are the boys? Yo, why the hell would you go in that house, bro? What are you here? I'm oh god. Nah, bro. Bro, I can't. <laughs> I'm in such denial of watching this already. Yo, all my leg hair is sticking up right now, guys. Like, no joke. I can't, man. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm being a little bitch. I got this. Oh. Carlos? Oh, Jesus Christ! Get away from that door, Anna. Patricia, get out, Anna. What are you having? You just had to have that freaking bead door. No, dude. Yo, the crazy people are always right for some reason. You shouldn't open that door. Close the door. Please. She'll hurt us. Dude. Okay, guys. Everything's okay. You're always safe when it's daytime in a movie that is horror genre. Anytime it's daytime, that's like break time for you. Relish in this shit. <laughs> oh my gosh. How did that happen? Yo! <laughs> the classic Scooby-Doo, I love it. Not She's not the... Velma from the live action movies, is she? I I thought that when I first saw her, but now that there's a Scooby Doo reference, it's making me think it. I do not like those curtains, bro. 
I can already imagine the freaking scene, bro. She's gonna be behind one of the curtains in her dress. I love how there's a bunch of emotional scenes and my anxiety is just making me. It calms myself to talk out loud. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's, it's tag in time for the scary shit. It's night now. Oh, here we go. There's always one sibling who awakes. I'd hate to be the unlucky one. I'd rather just freaking stay asleep. You never know what's happening. Who the hell does that? <laughs> what kind of janitor is that, bro? Oh my god, bro. She gets the children. Her crying lures the children. Puts them in like a, a trance or some shit. Oh no. <laughs> Two birds, one stone. All she needed to get one and the other would follow. Oh, no. Oh, please don't do it. Don't look. Don't turn around. You little bastard. She's going to be in the reflection. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> ah, it's giving my back pins and needles, bro. Fuck. You saw them, how were they? They were fine. I mean, they were scared, but they were fine. I promised them that they would be safe, Coop. I Who did you try to stop? I don't know. No, oh, no. Come on, I've handled enough from one night. Why did she park so far away? Oh no. Oh God. At least she's not walking fast. Kid, get the hell out of there. Oh, God. Kind of saw that one coming. I braced myself there. But apparently she, like, brands them. That's what the mark on the kids was. Oh, God. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, my God. Enough. I wouldn't like that time. Yo, where the hell is his mother at, bro? Oh my god. But honk the horn, get you. <laughs> I'm so sorry for doing this, bro. But I'm so freaked out. Quite the imagination. Dude, this is the endless night. I can't, bro. Give me a break. Thank you. <laughs> Daytime. Oh, what's his name? That guy's from Breaking Bad. What's his name? Is that Tuco? The ritual is called smudging. Oh, it's the Annabelle Priest! The body of any negativity that may have attached itself to the weeping woman mm -hmm. she was known for her beauty really a beautiful woman in a fit of jealous rage she drowned them in the river after she realized what she had done she was consumed by guilt she mm. threw herself into those same waters 
of course, they have a giant ass pool. Oh my god. See, I thought I thought she was weeping for her husband, but it was for her children. Now the story makes sense. It's it's been a while since I heard the complete version of like the tale. There's an episode on it. I used to watch this show. I think it was on NBC. It was called Grimm. I know, it's not like a high budget show, but I really enjoyed it. I watched it. A lo uh, I don't know. I forget when it ended. Like four years ago? Five? Uh, I hate you. Stop. Stop. Please. Oh my god. Oh my god. She's gonna be. Don't put it down. Don't put it down again. She'll be closer. I know how this works. Of course. Oh, it's gonna blow towards the water. Oh no, she's gonna be looking like Gonzo Dim in that shit. Oh no. Oh god. I, sh I should have seen it coming. <laughs> God damn it, bro. I hate this. Please. I don't know why I back up in my seat like that shit's going to do anything. <laughs> you know, you know what I do? I drive to different time zones and like hop on a boat so it's always daytime. Oh no wait, I'd have to go over water. <laughs> Never mind. Yo, no way she messes with Tuco, bro. Oh, picking up her gunk, bro? Nasty. I am one with the force, the force is with me. <laughs> oh no, it's those curtains! Yeah, just, just peer out your door. That's perfectly fine. You see, hear someone crying in your house. Just look outside. Nah. What the hell? Yo, don't tell me his eyes are gonna be... Okay. You were sleepwalking, baby. Oh, sorry. You were just sleepwalking. It's okay. Come on, baby. Let's get you upstairs. Let's go to sleep. <laughs> you want to go to sleep? Yo, your son's about to go to sleep forever. Those damn curtains of death. I'm telling you, at one point, she's going to be behind a curtain. She's just going to be posted up like that shit. Oh great, she has a mirror on her door. Is there someone in here? <laughs> oh my god. Every single horror movie. It's somebody there! The mirror. I'm looking in the mirror. Oh my god. Oh ah! shit. Yeah, ask ask questions. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I'm sorry. Come on. Well, she'll be back tomorrow night. You guarantee that shit. I'm starting to appreciate mornings a whole lot more. Okay. Soon, and she will come for them. You know why? Because I told her to. You know, when what? my boys God for their salvation. Instead, I pray to her. Dude. Vindictive. Jeez. I mean, who could blame her, though? It's nothing like losing a child. I don't have any children. Obviously, but still. I, I know from 
a lot of people that losing a child is like next to no pain in the world that can even compare. Oh my god, they have an attic? Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is the freaking house of horrors, man. Oh, you dumbass. Why are people so stupid? I don't care how old you are. Push it up. Oh, no, no, he's a good boy. This is the longest hour and a half of my entire life, dude. <laughs> oh, God. You just got jabated, you fool. Oh, the curtain. The curtain! Watch the curtain. Yep! Okay, that was weird. <laughs> How did you not catch him? Did she need both at the same time? Okay! Yo, it makes her look like a bad mother. Uh, this movie's making my nose act up, so I had to go blow my nose. And of course I had to pause, so just seeing how much time we have left, we're exactly halfway through, bro. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? Uh, of course. Well, they don't have a shower, so there's no alternative. Uh. Oh, this is so weird. Oh, God. Rinsing. <laughs> oh, there's no room in the tub for both of us. Sam. Dude. Mom. Mom. Oh, my God, bro. Punch her in the face. Uh, dude. Camera, why you gotta go in the room, bro? Sh screw off! Okay, okay. <laughs> oh my god. Number one protection, baby. With a doll. Annabelle. Oh god. I keep referring to him as Tuco because that's the only name I know him for. I don't know his real name, and I don't know his name in this. Uh. Excuse me? I've seen you before. She's attached herself to your family, not your house. If you move, she will follow you. That's what the brand is for. Are you supposed to tear Are you just gonna rub eggs all over everything? <laughs> you think it's silly, don't you? Uh Ta-da. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Yeah. Um, she said she wasn't religious, but her world is shaking right now. Drowned her children. Is the only witness to her sins. They hold a special power over her. Oh yeah, there was the red tree in the beginning. Oh, he's using her whatever. <laughs> the tears of La Llorona have sanctified them. Why? Anti-venom. Science! <laughs> Don't right say it. Here. I hate you! I knew he would say that. <laughs> Overpowered, bro. This guy's an absolute stud for being with them, though. Massive respect. What the hell? <laughs> He's just standing still through it. What is he doing? This 
guy's awesome. You use my son as bait? No, of course not. Get away from the door. Are you crazy? Oh no, she's gonna try to tempt her. Where doll? No. You're being baited. Oh god. Oh my god, what's wrong with you? Get back in. Get back in. <laughs> Mommy, I got Missy and I didn't break the beans. That's what you get. Yo, mom's here. Another force to be reckoned with, though. Oh, okay. God, this shit turned into Subnautica. This guy is the goat, bro. All right, get out of that damn pool. Fill it up, bro. You ain't never swimming again. Your pool is now filled with holy water. My Yorona had no choice but to leave. What's wrong with her? Rafael. Oh, here we go. Oh, great. Sit, this guy's got to sit in the closet with his creepy ass sister. <laughs> I mean, it worked because that's where the original mom had her kids before she opened the door. But it's okay to be scared. Everybody is. Sometimes I am. Daddy was. Rafael? No. He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's love and bravery which triumphs evil. Oh, dude, was that her nastiness in there? My voice. You, oh my god. Why? Why? What did I tell you? Okay. <laughs> what the hell? I do not trust her. She's gonna change her face back. I mean, she's seeing, she's suffering the same pain. I wouldn't say she's just redeemed herself though, but it's a start, I guess. My man, bro. <laughs> He comes rushing in there. <laughs> oh, he's a trooper. I love him, though. Anna! Uh, okay. So she's a vampire. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Oh, my God. My eyebrows are in a permanent flex right now. <laughs> <laughs> Even I was scared for a while. Really? No. Not really. <sighs> it's over. <laughs> it's over. I'm literally happy it's over, bro. This is crazy. Well, we will talk about this. I did it. I did it! I'm proud of myself. <laughs> oh my god. 
I'll start off by saying this film definitely gets a bad rap. It's not as bad as the reviews are saying, but it's definitely not on par with the other like movies in the Conjuring verse. I really enjoyed a lot of this, but just generalizing off the top here, something I noticed at times it could be a little too fast. Like things are moving a little too quickly. Like there's no kind of real calm. You know, like how I said daytime is like your timeout or just your your safe zone when you play a tag you have your safe zone at least if you play a traditional tag daytime is kind of your safe zone it's where you like take a break in between and then nighttime of course when shit starts to happen but i i noticed this movie did have a, some good parts of like the like the loving family connection and them like talking because obviously any movie has to have its like moments but especially in a movie like this because it's still supposed to be like the love of one's family can triumph anything and you have to like band together to overcome like a challenge. It just makes me think that you you had the second conjuring when he played, you know, like uh, Ed Lorraine. I said Ed Lorraine, like that was his last name. Ed Warren was playing the guitar and he's doing the, oh, I can't help. I'm not trying to sing for you, but you know what I mean? He had the, his guitar thing and it was all wholesome and stuff i think just a little bit more of that would have done better in this movie so you can kind of side with them more feel more of like a connection and a heart to heart you know what i mean but this movie did have good moments i wouldn't say it's again as bad as their views are i'd say this is more around like a six six and a half i'm not gonna rate every movie but this one's an interesting case because it just didn't do too well critically and from audience score so i'm not gonna any movie i watch i'm generally not gonna give it a rating at the end but i'd say like if just generalizing here i'd say it's like in the six range because it did it had a lot of good moments there were some where i was like okay this looks like a little cheesy or weird i'm not saying that in like the effects i'm saying with like la Yorona, when there were parts where she was like grabbing the kids one it was just one in particular where she was dragging him and stuff and i'm like okay this is a little bizarre i know how else is she supposed to get them she has to drag them but it just looked a little bit off the way the camera was pointing towards it and i guess the other one i just complained about was i saw the curtain bit coming but she was like there she's like <laughs> peekaboo and then she gave the kid like 20 seconds to run away and didn't grab him i'm like you're trying to get the kid and he was like a foot away from you and you didn't even touch him. But I, but I thought it was because she had to take both at the same time. But no, she took the daughter at the end and tried to drown her. So, And I guess that guy was savage. What was his name? Raphael? You know, I, I called him too because Breaking Bad. But he was Raphael and he was a complete savage, bro. He wasn't scared of shit. I thought he had a plan when he backed up in the corner, but I was like, I was like, what is he doing? I did not anticipate he was going to use the whole family as bait and then just splash her with the anti-venom holy water converted tears, bro. And then do the, the rose, what was it called? The rosewood? I forget what it's called. Like that tree shit. He sprinkled it. I was like, damn. I mean, he had a backup plans for backup plans, dude. This guy's crazy good. <laughs> but in the movie, you always have to have the kind of, like, expert, like, at least in this movie. That's why I love, like, the Conjuring movies, because the continuity of Ed and Lorraine Warren. And it's so... The thing with those movies, what makes them special is because every time you see that movie, we'll start off based on the true story. And Ed and Lorraine Warren were real people their house actually has like the museum of artifacts or whatever like annabelle annabelle <laughs> annabelle's a raggedy and doll and they actually still have it in their house in a display case that they clean like they clean and they dab it with holy water every like month or so it's like very interesting whether or not you believe in any sort of religion it's just it's still like cool to see anytime you have a movie and real life things influence the movie like it's based upon like real events and stuff i think it's cool to have kind of if you have a comic book movie you want to be as accurate as possible but i like when shit is real and then they try to translate it but it 
what makes it so awesome is because again it's supposed to be like a creepy thing going on so then when you see based on the true story you're like oh shit i know i'm not talking about this movie in particular but the first two conjurings and now the next one again is based on the thing and another because like i said i i've seen those two movies so just i don't know if you know this but an interesting fact i don't know how to like detail it or word it correctly but they were actually ed and lorraine warren were given permission uh, from the vatican it was from like the the highest of the high churches to actually take on like certain cannot be explained cases to help people like they were the church actually worked hand in hand with them they were like the only exception to like bizarre cases that were didn't fall in the lines of traditional police work so i'm like that's like so cool and it's so creepy and ominous at the same time because you know what i mean just from from me i come from a somewhat hardcore somewhat hardcore religious family again every family varies but for me for the most part i do consider myself like a christian and believe in god even though sometimes i you see you see the world and stuff and you can kind of doubt things and stuff but for the most part i stay a religious person and believing in these things so when it's so as someone as a believer to some degree when i see shit like this and i get creeped out and i'm like oh god <laughs> you know what i mean so I always found these movies interesting, but I do think out of the ones I've seen, no, this one I'd put second to last. I've seen The Nun. I'd put that one as dead last. This one would be second to last. What is my favorite one? There was the two Annabelles I watched. I don't know. I'm not going to do an order here, but I thought this movie did have its moments. La Llorona, they did a good job. She looked creepy as shit, dude, crying like her nastiness, as I like to say. I thought it was blood, but no, it was gross, yucky, yucky. Uh, and there were just other good little moments. I will say the ending was a bit, I want to say it's anticlimactic, but they just, they, they killed her. Like, what? He's just like, catch! You know what I mean? And she was like, oh, God, you know? Sabato like she was a vampire, but I don't know. The ending when she looked in the puddle, leave it up for interpretation. Because I don't know if it was one of the movies, but I heard somewhere, like the line, it was like, you, you cannot kill evil. It will always come back. And that actually might have been The Witcher once you off gone to Odin. When you like read Dandelion's little tidbits that he writes about Geralt's journey. That, there's just a little connection there. But... Oh, she did. She kind of sounded like a wraith from The Witcher, some of her screams. I have noticed, like, a lot of times, video games and movies, they share the same sound effects, which, it's fine. I mean, wraith, she's technically a wraith, so it works. Mm, police of power. God, I love The Witcher. But anyway, back to this movie. I don't really have that much to go over, because it was a horror movie. There wasn't much plot. But I will say... I like how they did the the lady, meaning like the original woman who had her children in the closet. Like I understand her grief. There's a diff there's something kind of I wouldn't say it's controversial, but when you ever you have someone who like commits a crime or is like just flat out rude or they don't follow your traditional sense of like let's say honor and goodness and well being, a lot of times you can't respect a person like that. But when you look at a past, you can understand it. It's kind of like the end of Spider-Man 3. He said, I'm not asking you to forgive me. I just want you to understand. Because there's always another side to the story in literally everything. So I like that she was kind of vengeful a bit. I don't know about praying to La Llorona. But I like that at the end she heard... Um, Oh my god, I don't even know the main character's name. Was it Anna? I don't know. Anyway, the, the main mother was in the basement and crying for her children. And I liked that the woman saw her pain and then just regretted it because she knew how it felt. So I like that little redemption, even though she shot Raphael, bro. But, you know, it all worked out in the end. For the most part. I mean, again, it's up for interpretation, but... 
I liked it, but I do. I, I feel like it was a little too short. I mean, even though it felt really long. I said we were halfway through when I had to blow my nose, and I'm like, what? I thought there would be like half an hour left, and we were, we were halfway through. I was like, are you kidding me? But still, I, I, I don't think it was necessarily the time. I just feel like some moments were a little bit too fast. Like I said, the guitar scene from The Second Conjuring was a perfect example of that heartfelt moment that's slow and just is and it provides so much for a movie or anything you're going for is moments like those. But no, I stayed awake for this. I wouldn't say I enjoyed it, but I definitely did stay awake and we survived it. And now we have the next one, which is uh, Annabelle Comes Home. I don't know who directs that. Let me look that up. All the Annabelle films I've liked, I wouldn't, again, I would never say I enjoy a horror thing but it's, it's a weird relationship. It's a love-hate relationship because I don't necessarily hate it, but I don't love it. I'm like in between because like I said, it, it keeps you up and in it if it's done properly. Obviously, I know you can overuse jump scares, but at least it keeps you invested and it's kind of an adrenaline rush. So if you're an adrenaline junkie, this shit's for you. Let me just see. Annabelle comes home. That is the next one. I I need to give myself at least two days to calm the hell down. Okay, so James Wan did do the story on Annabelle Comes Home, which is good to hear. It got a 65 and a 70, so that's pretty solid. So I'm, I'm excited for that. And it's a bit longer, an hour, 46 minutes. I'm just looking this off Google. No, but... I would again I I wouldn't categorize it as enjoyment but I did like this movie I didn't really like the nun I liked I would go above like I wouldn't say love but some word bigger than like for the conjuring movies because I again I don't want to say enjoy but I did I'm trying to think of a synonym that proves my point without me um, going back on my word of what I said about not enjoying horror things, but I would say I did have a great deal of satisfaction watching the Conjuring movies and Annabelle. So I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to the next one, but that's going to be scary. Cause that doll from the first time I saw it, it scared the shit out of me. I don't know, dude, I do not mess with that, man. And especially the nun I've had horror Oh my god, bro. No. I'll save I'll save my little story about the nun, my encounter with the nun. I know it's very like, whoa, what's going on there? I'll save it for the intro of the Conjuring movie is when I'll talk about my encounter with the nun. It's not what you think. Trust me, you will have no idea. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I will watch Annabelle Comes Home. Like I said, two to three days. I need to calm down. I need to venture downstairs now. It's like one something. Well, it's close to two in the morning. So I'm going to use my flashlight. And I'm going to have a snack because <laughs> I'm hungry. And like I said, it gets the adrenaline rushing. So I'm pretty hungry right now. But like I said earlier, hope you guys enjoy this one. Until I watch Annabelle Holmes, Annabelle Holmes, <laughs> Annabelle comes home. It's like she's the detective. I'll catch you folks in the next video.